The R Commander interface can be used to perform various basic statistical analysis operations. So what we'll look at here is performing some calculations on data that's already in the data frame and then using the R Commander interface menus to generate various summary statistics for this data set. So what we're going to do is to make use of a data set which is in the mass package. So first up we're going to load a package from the load package menu in the tools. So we then wait a bit while it comes up with a list of packages that we're interested in loading. So we search through here until we find the mass library amongst all of these packages that are already there. Select it and click OK and we get told in the messages section that mass has been loaded OK. So now what we want to do is to use the data menu so we do data, data in packages, and then read data set from an attached package. Double click on mass to select it, and then we scroll down here until we find the crabs data set. Then we click in here to OK to select it, and now we'll see that we've got a data set called crabs, which we can view. So here we can see the data that we've got. So we've got a couple of categorical variables, and five measurements that are taken on each of the crabs, which are numerical variables. So what we might want to do is to create a new variable. So for example, let's say we're interested in looking at these variables on different scale, such as in a logarithmic scale. So what we will do here is to go to the data menu, manage variables and data set, and compute new variable option. So we've got the various um, variables that we can make use of here. So let's say we want to take the frontal load measurement. Well, we want to create a new column in the data set which is the logarithm of this measurement. So in the expression we make use of the log 10 function. So this is to calculate logarithms at base 10 and then brackets because it's a function and then the name of the column that we want to take the data from and then we specify the name of the column that it's going to be saved in. So we do OK. We notice that it's used the with function to do that calculation. So if we click on view data again, we can see we've now got an extra column which is the log of the frontal load measurement. Now another thing we might want to do with multivariate data sets such as these is to take our five measurements and standardize them. So what we do there is mean center them by subtracting the mean value from each of those columns and then we will divide by the variance of that variable so it ends up with unit variance. So we make use of that same menu section and the standardized variables bit. So now what we do is we're going to select those five variables. So we've got four there, fifth one there because they're in alphabetical order. Click OK. And now we'll see that various operations are done. So the scale is used as the function to do the scaling, and then they're saved as additional columns. So again, we do view data set, and we can see if we extend this window here, we've now got standardized variables for each of those four, five rather, original variables. So another thing we might want to do with data is to, for example, take a numerical measurement and divide it into categories. So to do that we do data, manage variables and data set, bin numeric variable. So if we select that option and let's again take the frontal load measurement and here that's what we're going to call it is FL group because we're turning it into bins. So let's say we want it into four groups of equal width and then we just pick out the particular ranges that it selects to use those as the category names. So we click on OK. It's probably easiest again just to do view data and we scroll all the way to the right. We'll now see that we've got a categorical variable and the start and end values of each of the levels of that category have been automatically turned into those names. So now that we've got this data set, what sort of calculations can we do? Well, we've got this statistics um, menu 
and as we've got a data set selected what we can do there is summarize active data set and it says there are 15 variables do we want to proceed so we could click OK so what this does here is mimics the function summary and gives simple information such as the min, mean, median and max value for each of the individual columns in that data frame. Now where we've got a factor it's clever enough to realize that that's categorical and to give counts rather than summary measures such as mean which don't make sense if we've got a category. So what we could also do is look at frequency distribution so this is like creating a table with a count of the number of times each of our categorical variables occur. So we can choose this frontal lobe grouping variable that we've created. So if we click on OK, we'll see here it's given us the counts in each of those groups and then the percentage. So those percentages add up to 100%. So it shows that most of the measurements are within the central two groups. So what else could we do? Well, we could do the table of statistics. So what we would do here is let's say we want to take, say, one of the other measurements by sex. So we've got our male and female crabs, and we want to work out the mean value of this variable for each of those two groups. So this is just a front end for the tapply function. So here we've got the mean of that variable is 13.7 for female crabs and 14.3 for male crabs. So what else could we do? Well, we've got this set of categorical variables, so we could have a correlation matrix. So, well, there are continuous variables, so we could select those four and the last one. And if we just do OK, we'll see we get the correlation matrix for the five variables. Diagonal elements correspond to, um, it would be the variance in the variance covariance matrix, but as we're using the correlation matrix, we've scaled it based on the variances, which is why it's one for the diagonal elements. So we see that a lot of these are high, so there's a lot of correlation between these measurements. Probably unsurprising. So what else could we do? Well, we might be interested in looking at one of those variables and testing whether or not um, it, it follows normal distribution. So it can either be done graphically, or you can do the Shapiro-Wilk test of normality. So we pick on one of the variables, and then it'll do a test sort of with the p-value indicating whether or not the assumption of normality is reasonable or not. So last up, we might consider looking at the contingency table. So we could do a two-way table. So we pick a couple of variables such as, let's say, sex of the crab and the grouping for um, the frontal lobe measurements. Then what we would do, say, we might want the total percentages and by default it has the chi-square test of independence there so we click OK so we've got our contingency table which is done as percentages as that was what we were asked for and you can see it totals up for each of those categories so the data is spread evenly between male and female craps.